Okay, so today's lesson is going to cover <clears throat> what we call a vintage uh, clean. We're going to use a little dumbbell here. You can use a kettlebell as well, but we'll use a, uh, a dumbbell to help us go through the list. So it's going to be what we call vintage press, uh, a clean to, to the right position as you'll see here in a little bit, and then a press on the right side, and then we'll obviously uh, work with the left side as well. With that as well, we're going to work into a little bit of uh, uh, tai Chi Qi Gong. So as you'll see, if I'm starting here, starting a wide stance, and I'm going to go to, <clears throat> I'm going to open my feet. As you can see, this left, this will be, as you're watching this foot here, you'll shift your weight over to this side here. So your body will shift, you'll roll that foot out. Let's squat, I like to call it catcher, catcher sweat. So if you see a catcher really lean over, it's like that. But we're going to make the arms do something a little different too as well. So we're going to, as the arms will come in, we'll go into like a bow, like you're pulling a the cross, and then it's like pulling a bow, and then they'll shift, and the same thing here. And you have good alignments, not up, not down, just like this. Now there are times where you can go, you know, like this to change the, to get the whole spinal stretch, but we'll just work back and forth. And the, what that'll do is open up <clears throat> the hips. This will open up. The, uh, the arm movements will open up the chest, create range, and then if we decide to change those, we can start to get the lap and the longer muscles for the golf swing as well. But the first exercise is just to get the heart rate going. So it's going to be similar to a one-arm swing. You get that down and you go on up. Again, if you want to learn the forms with this, you just go to the website, study injury prevention for your neutral posture, and watch the lifts how we do this. So, this vintage swing is the same thing as a one hand, one arm kettlebell swing. Comes up here, you'll come up and then press back down to the rack position or clean position here. That's different with the kettlebell, it goes to the back of the wrist, up and down. So it's here. That'd be a full, that's called a snatch, what I just did there, which would be incorrect because I've trained that more often. So clean, press. Now, what we can add into that is we'll go clean here. And then a little push press like we did on the first video. So here, and then just a little baby push press to get the knees involved. Okay, and then I'll start to get the heart rate going here. What weight should you use with this? Uh, 10, 15. And what this is designed to do is it's the first progression to teach you how to do this next exercise, which we don't, we won't do today. But it's the vintage snatch right there is what they call that. So <clears throat> it looked like this. It looks a lot easier when I'm doing it than what it actually is. But the first stage of that, get your forms, get everything smooth, get your alignments correct. Don't let your elbows pull in, pull like this. Right between the legs, just like a warm swing. And press just like that. Now from there, we'll drop our weight. <clears throat> and then from that'll be, we'll go into the the catcher's pose with the little bow. And just patience with this. Don't try to go, you know, there's goals where you can go all the way down and all this. You'll see me in some videos where I do that. That's not the goal. The goal is to just be comfortable. You might only be able to get here. You might only be able to get like right here. Sink into that hip. But don't overdo it. and then get this alignment. You'll see what that looks like from the side. You'll see I'm not bending forward. I'm here, and you can see that alignment shift right here so I can really work on my alignments. Okay, so alignments are the joint alignments. So I would wanna be pulling my arms like this or this right now. Uh, and then you have structure, which is I'm staying upright. I'm not bending. Or tipping. If I bend, then that's not really a stretch. So if I start to bend forward towards you, I'm not stretching at that point, and I'm putting my spine in a weak position. So we'll go back to the next room. Clean it. We're gonna a little push press, and then a little quicker rhythm here. That is to get the heart rate going, so you can <clears throat> start to stretch a little better. The 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 better the blood is flowing. The, the better you can stretch into your hips, your hamstrings, your, your spine, and everything. 
So if you don't feel comfortable controlling the weight at this speed, don't do it, slow it down. Again, this is entry level stage one. So if you're stage five and you're practicing this, you're really high level in your fitness, make sure your forms are excellent. Study your videos. Make sure your alignments is, they're supported. They're not that this way. Make sure your alignments of your joints, you're not doing it like this, which is common, or this way. Make sure that everything's facing the camera, that you also have your structure here. So the structure is bending correctly. We've got neutral posture. And it's a tight pattern. It's soft and tight, you know, so what I mean, it's not stiff and rigid, it's just like the golf swing. Okay, so I'm not counting reps there. It's not my goal. Go to where you're a little uncomfortable, uh, but don't don't overkill it. Okay, so then we're going to. This is part of the eight rope cage and qigong. This is a little variation. I think it's better for golf. You can also do this standing if you don't feel comfortable, and just switch. Just open the chest. You can do it from a horse stance like this, which is most common. And I'll shift over and do it like this. And you can see I'm shifting. That's a variation. I like this a little more advanced. But you'll get more in your golf swing because these are the these are the, the patterns you're really hitting those hips. You're also developing quad and glute strength as you do this. You're also opening the chest, back, and shoulders as we do it. So let's do rounds. Now it's not very difficult, uh, not going to try to say that it is difficult because it's really not, but it will be for some people, okay? The weight that you need to use is a comfortable weight because stage one is not about going past, not trying to become this, you know, perfection or anything. Stage one's more about technique than just getting started with this. It's all about that. As you get more comfortable and confident, yeah, up your reps and kind of know yourself. If you've been training for a long time, really work your forms. If you haven't trained at all, work your forms, but get started, even if your forms aren't correct, okay? And so now, what I wanna do is <clears throat> go back to some, some Qigong and Tai Chi. So we're going to just soften up here, relax, get neutral posture, like we talk about on the Tai Chi page, and entry prevention page. And then we're going to bring the hands out, work them in circles here, just gently. Try to get the electricity between the hands to work. Can't do that through stiffness, don't do this, don't lock your knees, soft knees, soft elbows, soft wrists, rounded, hollow chest here, so the hollow chest is sunken, but it's not this way. We have vertical alignment of the top of the spine here. So we've got all the structure, and then we just have the hands out. And then we're gonna lower the hands down a little bit without bending the spine, and then you'll feel it a little bit more because now the blood can flow to the fingertips here. And you're just going to gather that energy in between the hands. It's just to feel that uh, magnetic connection and then we'll hold it for, let's say 20, 30 seconds. This is a good place to either close the eyes or you know, just really center your focus in between your hands and your body right in the center and allow the energy to just become connected. <laughs> Great way to settle the monkey mind as well. Keep the mind from bouncing from frame to frame. Just sit here and sit and be patient with it, okay? Then we're going to go to, we're not trying to uh, do a thousand, um, you know, different forms. All we're gonna do is the same thing we did on the first video. We're gonna feel like we're pulling that water up with our whole body and extending it out. One revision, you can do this. I'm doing it because some people have shoulder injuries. I'm not going all the way up, which is, what you will see sometimes if you like it better and you really have the mobility open yourself up all the way like this but make sure going up is faster than the transition just like the golf swing and then we'll allow it to gradually build momentum it goes up nice and smooth and slow and then it really slows down just like a water just like a wave the wave comes in it's in transition it slows down and then it'll start to fall at the bottom. Go where you're comfortable with this. Try to feel the energy in between the hands. 
So here, as you're coming up, as I'm going down, I can feel it in my palm. I'm, my, I roll my hands out, I go up slightly, I'm working my body, and I can feel it all together. Again, you may not feel that if you don't. Don't force it, don't wonder, don't think anything's wrong with you, because it's not. It's just, it's going to take you more time. And nobody can tell you when that's going to be. Just keep practicing. Don't focus on that it's not working or it is working or that. Just keep practicing and it'll start to happen. It took me a while before I could figure it out. I had no idea what people were talking about when they were with the tingling feeling or the electrical feelings or the energy or the magnetic feeling you have between the hands and the whole body. Uh, it'll take time. We're going to bring that back in. And now you should feel it. Really, I can feel it here just with me. Quite a bit stronger than between the hands. And I'm just going to stay now for about 30 seconds. Make sure you breathe. And relax. Okay. And now <clears throat> we're going to go the same pattern we did the other day or the first session. So it's here. Tall, and then we'll sink down, let the hands go. We'll turn the hands this way. We'll come up. Hands down, patience, patience, patience. Swing back like a backswing. You turn back, and then you sink down without moving the other way or this way, here and through. Another way to practice this, this is a great way is if I put this weight right here, you can see that my ear is, is on this weight. When I go here, I practice in my center, although I'm rotating, I'm not moving my head, my center off of that one way or the other. I'm moving, rotating, sinking, and then you'll see my center, my mass moving forward at that point. But on the backswing, as I turn, I'm maintaining the head, the energy is right split, right in the middle. There's not, I'm not here changing that center point of rotation. Good, I'm going to go up and tall, moved up a little bit there, really patient in here and start to learn about what that feeling. You're trying to feel as you split and you start to sink, as you turn the hands, that all this energy, you're, it's resisting naturally, you're not forcing it, you're not trying to resist it and all that. It's just real soft and relaxed and you're feeling that resistance of the air and, and electricity and all that. Now you can go obviously the other side and do the same thing. Just remember, obviously that's the balance in Tai Chi. You would be doing that Qigong if I was teaching you, but we're trying to build the swing in certain ways. So, and that'll really get that coordination built up on your lead and back side. So if you want to do the other side, go have that. Go into bending tree with the lead arm. <clears throat> the stage one level. So remember, this, this elbow is slightly bent, not all the way, it's not locked stiff. If it is locked stiff here and you go back, you slightly bend it because it's going to represent the shaft in the golf swing, not your arm. It's slightly bent, so that's what the shaft goes through. It has some bend to it. As we sink down and lower, we come back and then allow it to straighten without stiffness. So it's, it's alignment, the shoulders down, the, the, the shoulders are level, my hips are back, I'm through, and it's just this nice alignment. If I had a club, it'd look like this. If I was down lower in a real swing, it would look like that. So we're staying upright. Here. Okay. And you feel that bending tree because we bend it. I don't want it all the way bent. Bend it a little bit so it gives you the torque. And we use that energy and mass against the golf ball and relax it. So it's it's going to its natural straight alignment back through the shop. Yeah, it can stick and it stay bent. Yeah, like Jordan Speak does that. But what we're trying to do is here, we're not trying to snap it out. We're just trying to let it go through its natural alignment, just like this. There's the first progression is not going through like this. The first progression would be just like this, getting comfortable, getting into the grip alignment point, getting the joints to line up over and over and over. That's what we're trying to do. Get a feeling of this going through your arm, going through changes like the shaft would. So we don't want it stiff and stiff. We don't want it casting like this. We want it to bend and slow down like in transition. 
and bring it back nice and gentle. It'll come back into its natural alignment. And then when the time's right, we can we can let it go without even a lot of whip there. Just see it. It's just that becomes the ending point. But you have to do this to train first. And you can watch your yourself, like I said, in the iPad, as we always talk about training, watch your head moving, watch stand doing it like this. This is incorrect as well. See, there's no movement. You can see there's a lot of movement for you beginners or even you advanced players. If you're just training like this, bending the arm like this, that's not it. It's a whole body movement. One of the things you'll learn in sword training when you take it, it's these big rounded movements, you know, the big torquing movements. So it's like, whew, like this, we call it the samurai swing where you take it and it's the, it's not like you don't go like this. You get the sword knocked right out of your hand, sticks knocked right out of your hand. So it's these big rounded circular movements that you're trying to create and these torque at the right time. See, now I create the torque and there you go. So that's also, so it's here. So it's not just this and this, you know, or this and that. That's not it. You're trying to become coordinated. Watch the coordination that I'm working with here. It's patience. It's not turning back and turning through. It's turning back and sinking and staying there and then loading and then gradually working it back in a nice soft circular pattern. And then we bring in the right hand later on. Right now, these, you'll see for a while, we're going to do the same thing every lesson, that one. And then we'll do this because it's not how many forms we have. It's just what's the most efficient way to work. And I could give you 150 postures. And if you're doing all 150, um, you're going to never really develop the essential basics. I'd much rather have you learn, like Bruce Lee used to say, you can learn, would you rather learn 10,000 kicks in a day or would you rather kick 10,000 times one way? And the person that kicks 10,000 times the same way over and over and over learns. So that's what we're doing here. We have two basic patterns that'll help you learn. You don't have to have, I could go into all day about what you could and couldn't do and so forth. <clears throat> it's not important. You stay with this and you learn what I'm doing here and you match up and you just get good at it. Do it for a day, do it for another day. Next thing you know, you do it for a month. Next thing you know, you do it for a year and all of a sudden, you just move a certain way. It's not moving this way when you do Tai Chi or Qigong or kettlebells. All of a sudden you move that way in everyday life and you move that way in your golf swing and it's automatic. So anyway, um, you can also, after you finish all that, you can go into meditation. You can do the other side if you want. That's up to you. Uh, you can continue with more reps, more sets. That's up to you. I just want to give you the basics. If your legs are tight and they're, they're hurt right now and, they're, they're <clears throat> and so forth um, as far as pain, uh, from, from doing the workouts and all you do is just take a break, you know, come back in tomorrow, come back in a couple more days. But most of these you can do every single day and it's good to do every day. Just getting in these little habits of just doing a little bit. Don't try to go, you know, climb the mountain the first day. You won't be ready if you haven't been trained. Just start with a little bit here and there. So anyway, I appreciate you uh, tuning in and I know this will help you out with your everyday life. It's also mental, it should help you with your mental outlook. And then also, number one for while we're here, your golf swing, golf game.